to kickstart round four, do we have a match for you tonight? Top of the table clash between the Melbourne Vixens and the West Coast Fever right here at John Kane Arena in Melbourne. It's school holidays, as you can see, it's kids round. So expect a really loud crowd here to watch the two undefeated teams fighting it out for that top spot. It is going to be a great clash with so many great matchups all over the court. With the Vixens, they are starting exactly as they finished against the Giants. Keep an eye out for Eddie Weston and Mannix, their defense, and it has been firing already this season. And, you know, the inclusion of Rani Samuelson, I hope she gets out there today. She's been impressive, obviously, in Team Girls Cup. She showed what she was made of in round two. We'd love to see her out there. With the fever, Fowler and Glasgow, super, super strong. And obviously, Ariang and, Bra and Bruce in that defense end. The center pass will go with Verity Simmons, the West Coast fever. She is going to get us underway. Here we go. Anstis. Through Teague Neal, her first touch on the ball for a couple of weeks. There we have it, straight up to Fowler. An uncharacteristic miss. And that ball was probably a little bit short from Glasgow, but the, the, the thing about Fowler, she can make any ball look really good. Vixen into attack through Austin. Quick one to Maloney. Simmons gets a hand into it. Austin, what can she do? Early turnover, instruction call. She was fighting for that top position and, and there is the kind of fine line of working off that body and even obviously holding as well. And that happens in the first part of a game, doesn't it? Everyone trying to figure out how much they can probably get away with with the umpires as well. Yep, absolutely. And you've, and you've got to test the waters. Fowler, another miss. Contact. She gets another go. It's a penalty away. against Mannix. That's her second for the game, Fowler, and I'm sure we're going to see many more of those. It's good to see Alice T. Neal get her hand on the ball early. Obviously, she missed last round. She wanted probably just kind of pace herself a little bit after COVID, whether she's feeling any symptoms. We'll see whether her load is managed. Side, Great center, take there here. by Simmons. Soft side around here. Keep going, attack. Yeah. Glasgow straight to Fowler. She doesn't even look to put it up. It'll be interesting to see how Weston and Mannix, Weston had the hands over the pass there. Are they going to work back on a double or are they going to hedge, have an attack at that ball in the air? Austin, back to Eddie. Vixen's patient in attack. It struggled a little bit in getting depth on that second phase. They were all caught on that transverse line. Something that Liz Watson's usually really strong at doing, but getting a little bit of work done early up. She needs to get down and get some depth. Austin putting the Vixens on the scoreboard. Ariane always loves attacking. Fowler. Just for one, keep in mind that the last five minutes of every quarter, we have the power five where the Suncorp super shot is in play. So the white arc that you can see in the circle is everything will be worth two, but only in the last five minutes. As Simmons gets her hands up, we spoke about that in the pre-match, hands over everything. Backing Austin. back there by Watson. Good awesome. settler okay. there. Getting practice in already. Absolutely. And that's what you want if you're struggling to get it down to the goalers. When the goaler gets it and turns and shoots with such confidence, it's a nice, it's an easy one in. Defensively, I think Vixens need to tighten up here. When they turn and shoot with confidence, it just makes you stand a little bit taller. Shani Norda is Shani's across right the wing. court from us, keeping an eye on all the action. Shans, what are you noticing? I can't help but notice the fever intensity today. Um, unlucky there for Courtney Bruce and great work from Kamwenda getting that shot in. But they have just brought the heat. It's a much faster paced game than what the Vixens had to play on Saturday against the Giants, who were depleted not in personnel, but in energy. So I want to see the Vixens lift their energy to keep up with the fever, because at this stage, they are running right. That's a really good point by Shani because I think defensively the Vixens are a little bit in chase mode, even though it's really early days. I thought they were going to come out and set a bit more intent, be a little more dictating with their movements. They're a little bit in chase mode for me. So when we say chase mode, what do they need to do? 
Look, I think just getting behind that player, forcing them wide, actually forcing them to where they want. You can see Fever here making Vixens do multiple passes to that circle edge. Vixens are patient, but, you know, they, this can wear you down if you're happy to do this every time in attack. Austin finds Kamwenda. Easy shot for her to start off. Fever straight into attack, Contact, up the middle up. of the court for Fowler. That was an easy pass for Teague Neal. And that's the difference between the two teams. It's 1-2 and in into Fowler, and there's at least nearly 10 passes here for the Vixens. Maloney, what can Vixens do? Watson looking above. That's, that's the second phase depth that they've been missing for a little bit. I think Kate Maloney needs to give that centre pass and get straight down hey, there. From Wenda, not confident to shoot, she goes defense, back so out, well. finds Austin in the exact same position. Bruce and Ariang are definitely getting some little hands and tips in there. They're moving, they're quite agile with their footwork. It's, it's making the feeders second guess where that space is to actually feed it. A whole lot of defence is just being annoying, isn't it? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> As Shani and I know best. <laughs> pass, Glasgow easily yeah. finds Fowler. Obstruction advantage goal. It's it. Maloney. Austin finds Watson steaming down the court. Kumwenda back out to Watson. Vixen's happy to pass it around. Can they get it forward? Austin back to Maloney. Quick fumble, but she picks it up. Not faced by the hands over by Bruce. Great confident shot as Fever have already got the ball into their Contact, attack end. They do not want to wait. That's a quick centre pass from Simmons. You can have a look at the Vixens' defence and they're working that split circle like Shani mentioned in the pre-game. They've got a bit of a box shape out the front. Really strong defence there, shutting down the top, shutting down the middle and then separating at the back, hoping for that ball to go off the back. That was such good footage to be able to see. That's exactly what Shani Norda was talking about in the pre-game, and it worked. It caused doubt. And this is the important thing about playing against a fever. Vixens, yep, you're not going to get every one, but you just got to grind it out and continue to stay to those, stick to those processes. And when you get them, make it count on the scoreboard here. Reward that effort. Reward that game ball. Excellent work. Vixen. Down by one, but picking up the pace. Find Kawenda. Excellent work there by Vixens on the centre pass. They isolated, got a bit of a switch, positional switch. So obviously Ariane was caught on Watson, which left that depth nice down for Austin. Penalty, Mannix out of play. Glasgow looks straight to Fowler, doesn't even look at the post. Side and away, you're not out there. Advantage goal, not out. Vixen. Maloney finds Austin. Watson double teamed. Great feed straight over the top. Confident feed from Watson. And just with that second phase drive, it slightly hedged Bruce out a little bit, which left Kumwenda under the post. So they want to keep her active, but they also want to try and draw her out and get that home alone. Scores are even here at John Kane Arena. Teague Neal, strong ball up the middle. One for Fowler. Keep in mind, just over seven minutes to play in this first quarter. At the five minute mark, the power five will be in play. Maloney. That is contact, Wayne. Watson finds Kamwenda. It's that patience. A lot of other teams get to that point and they just throw it in. But Vixen's just is so patient, just working it in and out. Eddie trying to get her hands in there. Couldn't quite, but still disrupts the play. You're out, wind defense. The goal attacks in both teams that are playing a lot out the front. Oh, <laughs> nearly getting that one on that double back on the defense. But having to do a lot of work out the front, I sometimes think they should get in, try and draw that defender off the Money shooter. Let the attackers bring it all the way down to you. Kumwenda back to Maloney. 
Shani Norda, you've played on Janelle Fowler plenty of times. How are you seeing the matchup against Maddox? It's always a really tough game coming up against someone like Fowler or a Fever front end. But what you need to do, and this sounds easy, but it's stay positive. You need to know that you're not going to get every ball. And at times like that, you can, if you drop your head, it can feel demoralising, but it's not. She's tall, she's strong, she's agile. You've got to stay positive and you've just got to think, I'm going to go for the next one and I've got to go for the next one. And by the end of the game, you will start to get some hands to ball. Austin misses that. Kamwenda straight up and pulls the ball in. Shani, you're right on that one. And we actually saw the Fever play that game of persistence against the Firebirds on the weekend. It was they really had to grind it out for that first half, that first three quarters, and it paid off dividends in that last quarter for them. Lasgo misses the long shot. Eddie right on the edge of the circle. The Vixens trying to get into attack quickly. Fever, a sea of green in the middle channel, pushing them out wide. And I'm sure Vixens would have talked about this. Gain ball is really hard against the Fever, so when they get it, they've got to be patient. They've got to have multiple options. Oh, Courtney Bruce. I don't know how that wasn't her ball. Liz but Watson what? stole it out of her hands. Not yours. This is definitely mine. <laughs> and that's sometimes what you've got to do. Own it. Just take it. Roll with it. Have a look at our Harvey Norman replay on the screen. Oh, OK. Maybe that was Liz Watson. <laughs> it's the roll off. You heard the buzzer. We're now in the power five. Get ready for some Suncorp super shots from both teams as Fowler wants one straight away. Fever are doing really well, though. Short give and goes. You obviously see Simmons with Teague Neal. Give and go, give and go. They're starting to get that ball down a little bit too quick. It would be interesting to see if the Vixen's talking this rake on some defensive strategies to put on the centre pass to try and make them have to work a little bit harder and not stream down the court so quickly. It's a HCF tactical timeout to the Fever. Let's take a listen to Dan Ryan. Now, don't be surprised by it, all right? Really important. Guys, come in nice and close. All right, really important we jump into super shot mentality where we're keeping off circle edge and we're big in that two-point range inside the circle. All right, so all four of us on it. Ball side reset position and ball side reset position for you as well, right, if they're coming back to the line. Our accumulated pressure, bang on. All right, so stay with it. In attack, vision over the mess always, but let's keep working the extra pass because she's the free man. Pass and cut with her, all right? Big four minutes, guys, let's go, come on. Thanks so much, Kieran. And we are so close. So we're going to give you some more opportunities here. We're going to run through them. We're going to punish them, OK? Here we go. Three, two, one, two, three. Yeah. The game plan. Do you think that was a deliberate one because we're at the start of the Power Five? You heard Dan Ryan talk about the super shots. Yeah, he, he was really impressed with their accumulative pressure. And he said, but we're in the super shot time. Let's go to the game plan here. Let's get that separation. Let's have two people attacking the ball. He said, Vision, look over the mess, but he also talked about the importance of Glasgow and the work that she's doing out the front. Because she's the free person. So give that easy one and something else will open up. Vixen's leading by one. Shani Norda, what were the Vixen saying? Simone was really happy, or sorry, Simone was really happy with just their ball movement and letting it go really quickly, but drawing the defenders out of the circle so that they could then fake that ball and get it back in. So for them, it's that quick ball movement. It's making those defenders attack the ball on the first one to free up the attacker on that second move. Patient play by Fever. They can't gain any distance. Simmons straight to Glasgow. That connection already is strong between the two shooters. Vixens with the centre pass. Watson finds Weston. Speed straight onto the edge of the circle for Watson. That's a classic Vixens play, isn't it? Centre pass, send it straight to the middle to the back door option. Get it up the guts from the goal shooter and then work it nice and short to a, to a really nice, effective shot. And if we already have a look at our Nissan net points, Kumwenda leading the way on at 27. Three Vixens sitting at the top with Teague, Neal and Fowler. We'll keep an eye on that throughout the game. As Austin throws it straight over the sideline, giving the Fever another opportunity. What can they do with it? Courtney, Anstis to Ariane. Courtney Bruce even mentioned that in their huddle, just saying we need to just continue to build that pressure. It will come. And when we get it, we run through it 
and then we punish them on the scoreboard. So when they get these game balls, they said it must count. Glasgow to post. Her first Suncorp super shot for the game. Dan Ryan, he looks very happy with that one. That's exactly what he wanted. And it's the first time in the game Glasgow didn't even look for Fowler. It's, I guess she's so comfortable in this zone. She knows this, this is her role. She needs to play her role. Put up those shots. That's why you're on there. Maloney across to Austin. Her turn to have a go. <laughs> and the crowd says it all. The Vixens extending their lead out by two. It's definitely taking Fever a little bit longer to get down to shot now. That intensity, that increased pressure from the Vixens, trying to force them a little high and wide. They're even the one point shot in this time frame, that's all right. Just tick it over, especially if you've got a goal attack that can shoot two points down the other end. And you expect Fowler to shoot a lot of ones. You just have to make sure that when you get an opportunity to get the ball off her, you do. Guide obstruction center. Cross to Austin. Here she goes again. Two in a row. Incredible shooting. That shot was brought to you by Suncorp. That confidence. She's still got it from what she did in round three against the Giants. It was the breakout game for Kira Austin, who's returned this season from an ACL reconstruction. And Maddie, I don't want to relive your ACL reconstruction, but it is hard to get that confidence back, isn't it? It is. And, you know, sometimes it just takes you a little bit of time, but you can definitely see that confidence. Great rebound by Emily Mannix. That two-point shot not going in from Glasgow. But you do, you need to just work yourself in. And it's not a surprise that she's taken two games and then she's obviously had a really good one. And hopefully she can continue to build from here on out. Keeps in at that ball. They fly it across to Maloney. And it's a penalty against Sunday Ariang. Against Courtney Bruce. Sorry. Right, where's what Courtney's now? In the one. You can hear umpire Kate Wright explaining where to take the penalty from. The Vixens are happy with one. Any score ticking over is a good score. <laughs> so just get it in close and make it count. Austin, back to Maloney. They're really caught up at the top of this attacking third. Maloney finds Kumwenda on the baseline. She swings it to Watson. She wants it back. And Bruce tries to get in there to steal it. Yes. Austin for her third Suncorp super shot. Great start by Kira Austin. She's walking on that hand, those hands of Bruce, but not being affected at all. Great play by Fever. Fast into attack. They go back out. Simmons, can she find Glasgow? And they just get beaten by the siren in the end. Well, stay with us. It's the Vixens leading by six. from the Vixens getting that ball into the circle. Vixens leading by seven in this top of the table clash. Fowler, one-handed, just scoops it in. Straight across, she gets it back and steadies. Emily Mannix getting a little bit caught on the body there. She just needs to move her feet around, come around one, two, and straight up to challenge that nice high pass. Weston doing a mountain of work in attack for the Vixens. Patient play. Watson out wide, exactly where Dan Ryan wants her. No, it's a fraction outside. Watson into Austin. <laughs> what what Fever did really, really well against that Vixens lineup then is they were starting to make the pass laterally. And then the second Austin took a bit of a change of direction and went straight down and got a bit more depth that obviously broke it all apart. So just changing their ankles in angles in attack for the Vixens is really crucial to get on top of this fever defense. Yes. Ariane, lucky to get that one away, but it's moved down court. Teague Neal finds Fowler. Maloney to Eddie. 
Watson fighting her way through. Anster sh showing her a lot of attention. We, she obviously spoke about in the pre pre match about that tagging role, how dominant Watson is, how much score she gets. So trying to shut her down early. She's going to have to do a little bit more uh, proactive work out the front to do so, I think. Fever so quick into attack. Three passes, they're into Fowler. Sixteenth goal for Fowler. She's shooting at 88%. Shani Norda, what have you got for us? So at the end of the last quarter, Fever were defending really narrow, which allowed Vixens those wider channels. So to back up what Mads was just saying about how Vixens had, they were forcing them lateral because they're actually defending them one-on-one -on -one now. So they've changed up what they're doing defensively and it's working and they need to continue with that at the moment to help get them more turnovers. Ariang, back to Anstis. Simmons, they're stuck in this middle channel. She goes over the top, there's confusion. Weston pulls it in and the Vixens are back in control. It was really good shutdown work there. They used, you know, center and wing defense shutting down, goal defense and wing defense shutting down and opponents. Trying to shut down that middle channel and forcing them to go from side to side. And interestingly, the Fever just copying exactly what Vixens did. They made it hard for Vixens in attack. Ariang just got a hand to it. Bruce blocking the baseline. Kumwenda happy to play it out front. Working it nice and short just to secure that nice easy goal, especially when you get that turnover ball. I'm sure Coach the moment Kidda, she looks very happy with that and what her team's delivering so far. Watson finds Austin. There's a bit of argy bargy. Keep your eye on Simmons and Watson. They love a tussle, especially at the top of the circle. Kumwenda tries to take it one-handed. And this will be interesting because I think sometimes when Fever, uh, obviously coming from behind, they can get a little bit frustrated, um, whether it's through the umpires wanting to play on a little bit quick, and then multiple turnovers start to come. So hopefully they can stay a bit more composed and controlled here. The biggest lead the Vixens have had this game. They're up by nine. Fever just want to get on with it. If we look at the score breakdown, it was a 23-17 first quarter for the Vixens. And now they lead this second quarter by three. And it was really those, those super shots, obviously, by Austin. So quarter two, will we see the two-prong attack for the Fever when it comes to that power oh, five to really win. start to bring that deficit back? Maloney just Sneaks that one through along the baseline. Austin, a rare miss from her today. Fever back in attack. They're flying down the court. Teague Neal finds Fowler. Across the court it goes. Simmons, what can she do with it? That is the one thing with Simmons and um, Alice Teague Neal. We've got Simmons in the pocket. Love to see Alice Teague Neal come to that top so they can use those triangles, those swing balls. But it's that's, that's the understanding of a goaler playing on the, on the mid and a mid playing in the mid. We've had our first change for the game. Stacey Francis Bateman has come on to goal defence. Sunday Ariane to the bench. What's Stacey going to add to the game? Well, I think she's going to bring that physicality to Austin. She comes out really strong. She contests every single ball. She's going to make her earn it. I think there's been a little bit too much space for Austin to work in. So I expect Stacey Francis Bateman to shut that right down. Vixens with the lead, only back to six now. Watson looks long, goes short, cross court to Maloney. Great switch there by the defenders. Bruce unlucky on that one. Great pressure by Frances Bayman on that baseline. She really shut Kumwenda down. They didn't have an option, but they've got back possession Vixens. Fever are really trying to push, as we mentioned, that Maloney and Watson connection wide to try and lift that ball airily so that they can have a bit of a crack on that 45-degree angle. 45 degree angle. Simmons, can she find Fowler? That connection just is so strong between those two players. We haven't seen too many go in long, but they're definitely siding her early, but then working it a little bit shorter. Contact goal to bed, still a bed. Francis Bayman unlucky there. Just got a hand in late. Watson tries to get it back. Kumwenda, top of the circle. Finds Maloney. Yeah, that goal to goal pass. It's hard to defend, you would know. 
but if in attack, if you can get it and get it a bit closer for that effective and more efficient shot, it just can deflate the defenders entirely. Anstis to Francis Bayman. They find Glasgow, who looks straight in. It's a two-on-one in the circle. Fowler is not phased by that. She just pulls that ball in. Emily Mannix goes flying. Fever, they're back. They're coming back. You can feel the momentum changing. Kawenda puts it down. You definitely can feel a little bit of a shift here in the stadium. Vixen's having to work that extra pass, grinding it out, staying patient. And would you put that down to Frances Bayman? I think she's just injected a little bit more energy into that defence end. She's a lot tighter, getting that tip. A miss from Austin. Fever, though. They fumbled it, but they're back in control. Courtney Bruce, straight back to Ansys. They want to move this quickly. Teague Neal looks straight in, can't get it in. Simmons, up she goes. Fowler, steadies. Really well done there by Alice Teague Neal. It was mentioned in their huddle by Ryan that when Glasgow is back, he wants that 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two with the wing attack and centre to try and open up that nice one-on-one -on -one and isolation in the circle. As he applauds it from the sideline, yeah, I'd be happy with that too. He, he asked if that is his players, and they just delivered it really well. And not surprising, it is a HCF tactical timeout. We are going to get to listen in to the huddles of both of the teams, find out what the coaches are saying. Let's take a listen to the Melbourne Vixen, Simone McKinnon. She's sitting down. I think that's a luxury she has with such experienced players. She can let them talk amongst themselves and then come in and kind of just add that nice little extra addition. But there was one before when you went back, Joe, where it was quite dynamic and you came out and had a crack. That's, that's on. So back yourself for that. So just be caught. Just be, don't get caught chasing that cut across, okay. coming from following her around the front. So you can sit in there with him. Okay. Let that front drive around the top of the circle. If you're sitting, if we're sitting in, if okay, we're sitting yeah. back. Okay. Yeah. And just keep being prepared to work the ball short and attack. We're sort of running away a bit. So I Let's go again. Let's go back to what worked well for us in that first quarter. Was that short, sharp work rate? Indeed, let's go bloody hard here. Yeah, yeah we're Put the foot down now. Watch this Harvey Norman replay. Kumwenda straight across to Maloney. Austin finds Kumwenda again. Vixens into attack. They lead by four. Fever are coming and they're coming quickly. They mentioned in their huddle they wanted to put the foot down here. They want to work it short and sharp in attack. And in defence, in that split circle, obviously Simone asked of Mannix, have a bit of a fly. And look at the pressure Fever are creating. They get a hell ball. Courtney Bruce, she's physical, she's strong, and she's really leading her team. Shani Norda, what did you hear? Uh, from the fever. Yeah, Dan Ryan was really pumped with what they were doing. That quick one-two was exactly what he was asking of them. As you can see, he's standing in the coach's box right now. I think he's arguably the most passionate coach at the moment <laughs> in Super Netball, but he wanted that quick one-two. He wants them letting the ball go. He's loving that Sasha Glasgow is making Mannix and Weston make decisions, and he was just really pumping them up with a bit of confidence. So a bit of a, a coach, but also the hype man at the moment. <laughs> Giving you a run for your money, Watch out. Oh, <laughs> step down, Dan Ryan. <laughs> Simmons again finds Fowler. Vixens have to do something about it. And the Fever get it back to within two. This is interesting. We're not even in that power five yet, and that, that score line has come back to be a lot closer. Puts the pressure on the Vixens to have to go back to their basics, their game plan, work it short, sharp. Watson's so dominant when she gets it to that circle edge. Great strong front positioning from Kumwenda. We've had our first interchange made by the Melbourne Vixens. Olivia Lewis, former West Coast Fever last year, has come across to the Vixens this year. She's now standing strong and gets a deflection straight away. Unlucky. 
That's exactly the injection you want from any player coming off the bench. She does provide something different, though she might be a little bit shorter in height to Mannix. She's really active with her footwork. She's always proactive, trying to force the goalers away. Lewis would have to have one of the biggest vertical jumps, I think, in the competition. She can get up to all of those high balls. Smart move by the Vixens to bring her on. And you know what? She's trying something different. We saw Maddox getting a little bit caught on the body. She attacked the pass. Try and make them second guess. Is it on? Is it not? Vixens by two, but Fever. Smart play by Fever defence. Bruce, what can she do? It Kawenda gets her hand in there. You don't see that often. But Bruce doesn't want to delay. Answers into attack. Finds Teague Neal. Simmons, the connection. Can she get it to her? Sometimes when you're watching the favourite season's a little bit frenetic, but I think they enjoy playing at that pace. They're, they love playing on that one second. Sometimes when they're slowed down, that's when they can start to create some more mistakes. A little bit of extra workload that they have to do. That on that one second, one, two in and a score, they're, they're hard to beat. You can really notice that after a goal when it's their centre pass, they want the ball straight away to give it to Simmons so she can play on. We can see our Nissan net points match leaders. Fowler has skyrocketed to the top. Great tip there by Stacey Francis Bayman. She came from behind, tapped it down. Bruce taking on that loose ball. They really combine well as a defensive unit. Scores are even here at John Kane Arena. We are in the power five. So keep an eye out for any Suncorp super shots, especially from yes. Glasgow. Goal attack of the West Coast Fever. She gets double teamed so they can find Fowler for one. Watch the Fever. I always think it's interesting how, how teams play. If you get a gained ball and you can score a one, and it, then it's your centre pass. I wouldn't be surprised if they try and put a two-point shot up here. It's a strategy behind it now that we really have seen evolved over the last few seasons. Yeah, you chip away the one, obviously, but now you've got that option. Glasgow looks happy to just sit there and let Fowler take the one, though. Even the positioning from the Vixens defenders, Lewis and Weston both had one eye on Glasgow because they knew she was going to stand out. As we see Rani Samerson enter the game at goal shooter, Watson finds Samerson. Confident first shot from Rani Samerson, and we know she also wants to put up some super shots. Smart choice, though, I think, taking that one point to start. Just settle yourself in with your confidence and your nerves. Fever now take the lead by two. Maloney trying to slow things down. Bruce goes out flying. Samerson, can she nail her Suncorp super shot her first one for the game? What a brilliant start by Samerson. She's so exciting to watch. I'm so happy we got to see her today. Rewarding McInnes for putting her out there on court. Lewis, double jump on that shot. She gets rewarded. Vixen's into attack. What can Eddie do? Just over a minute and a half to play in this second quarter. Eddie finds Austin. Austin looks in. Bruce sitting in front. Chess has a go into the pocket. She read that one. She knew exactly where that was going. A little bit one-dimensional there by the Vixens. Good screen by Sanderson to open up Austin. And another two-point shot. This is the hardest thing about having two really strong scoring options. Four from four. Kira Austin in that Suncorp super shot range. She's confident, she wants it again, and she's got to fight Samerson for it. What a luxury the Vixens have. That is a huge shot from Rani Samerson. Teague Neal looks straight into Fowler. Lewis flies at it, misses it. Simmons drops it short. It feels like the last quarter, the intensity of these last two minutes. It's exhausting. Fowler just happy with one. And it's the Vixens by four. Vixens have really weathered the storm of that fever comeback, and then they're just chipping away. I mean, Rani Samerson, her injection has been outstanding. Not on for the Here back. Here she goes again. 
of unbelievable by the Vixens youngster. Five seconds to play. What can Fever do? Glasgow, Teague Neal, back to Glasgow. Here she goes. Well done to the Vixens for withholding that. That pressure, they came back. They just stood their ground. Rani Samerson, wow. Stay with us. We'll be back with the second half after this. You're watching Fox Netball. We have the top of the table clash between the Melbourne Vixens and the West Coast Fever. The Vixens are leading by five goals, but this first half has had everything. Momentum changes, lead changes, and you can certainly see that it is getting more intense as this game plays out, Maddie. Yeah, and we've seen it, as you mentioned, ebbed and flowed, and it's about withstanding that pressure when it comes from the opposition, and can you stay strong to your processes and keep chipping away? But we saw really strong from Vixens there. Be interesting to see how they continue to work their changes, injecting different people into the game, because when we saw teams do that, they just lift it to another level. Well, let's get down to the West Coast Fever coach himself, Dan Ryan. What was your message to the players at halftime, Dan? Well, we're right back in the contest, which is great. A really high quality game, only five turnovers for both sides. So uh, we proved in that second quarter that we were right in the mix with them and made a couple of little adjustments. So yeah, expecting a big third quarter. Dan, you spoke to your attacking one of the timeouts about that give and go, continue to challenge their defensive unit. Are we going to see similar short, sharp movement or do you want to see them sight Fowler and just send it straight down there, down to the end? Well, I think we've got to be really disciplined about how we use Janelle and at times she's got a two-on-one, so we've got to be willing to work the ball to circle edge and take an extra pass, but we also know that if she's there, the ball's got to go. So we've got a couple of threats in how we can use that and it's about right time, right place. And just quickly, Dan, have you been surprised by what the Vixens have put out there today? Oh, no, not at all. They're probably the top team in the competition, the team to beat. So we know it's going to be a challenge today and we expect nothing less from them. So looking forward to the second half. And Rani Savison, she came on and shot three super shots. How are we going to shut her down now that she's still on court? Well, 30 minutes to go. Courtney knows what's ahead of her and uh, expect a grind between those two. It's going to be tough, but uh, back in Brucey all the way. Thank you, Dan. We appreciate it so much. Enjoy this second half. I know we surely will as the Vixens are in attack. As you said, Rani Samerson, Maddie is in at goal shooter. Kamwenda is off the court. Bruce just flies through and steals that one. That's one for one, Lizzie. You had the one in the first quarter. Bruce is getting back in the third. On cue, Dan Ryan said she knows exactly what she needs to do. And no surprises. Frances Bayman still on the court in goal defence. She added so much in that second quarter. It's good to keep the, the seven as is. As I said, they, they shifted a bit of momentum in that couple and of minutes. Lewis just rips that ball out of the air. She's earning her position in goalkeeper. I love seeing her in the front. I think Mannix worked a little bit too, from, too much from behind. She's really making them second guess it. And if we go across to Shani in order, she'll agree. A goalkeeper that just sits out in front with confidence is hard to stop. Is. Whenever there's a low ball Honestly, release, no, Olivia no, Lewis no. is there to oh, rip it in. And goal. like we said at the start, you're not going to get every one, but if it's there at any time, you've got to be able to pull it in. But what I'm really interested in in this quarter is keep an eye out for Courtney Bruce. She's had a whole half to watch the ball pattern. So while she might not have had a heap of hand on ball thus far, she now knows where it's going, and I have a feeling she might be reading a few more of those intercepts. Does it change it, though, for Courtney Bruce now that the Vixens have a different attack line? Look, it does, but it doesn't, because out the front, the ball's still moving the same. But she needs to make sure that she's staying on her player. She can't let Rani come in and get that ball. If she goes out, she needs to keep her out whilst keeping her eye up. It's very tough work being a defender, Bianca. <laughs> oh, don't we know it. Savison, ball's in her hand. She goes back out to Maloney. The Vixens finding it hard to get onto the edge of the circle. The Fever doing their job in defence. Austin will get another go. Rani's a really smart player. I think what she'll do against Bruce is trying to screen her out so the Vixens can still get that depth in that second phase. So expect her to manipulate her body, not only to create for herself, but create for the uh, for her teammates as well. Glasgow, back to Teague Neal. Simmons goes flying through. She's their go-to. Fowler. 
looked like an easy pass, but Fowler did a lot of work to be able to grab that one. That's that short ball that Olivia Lewis and Chani was mentioning about. What she does is she sits off the body to make them think that it is free, but it comes through at that last second to try and get a little tip. Watson doesn't have options. They're looking, they're trying to find something. Everyone out of the circle. You really want to have that dominant target towards the post. That can sometimes be the challenge of a moving circle because you don't have that nice target there. Everyone starts to help out and do roles that they may not re be required to do. Fever, blistering pace to Simmons. Teague kneeled straight up. That quick play that we saw in that second quarter, Fever are sticking with it. It's working for them. Vixen's here struggling to get over that transverse line. Having to go back. Love to see Maloney get down. You've got the backup of the wing defence and goal defence on the line. Get down, create some space. Nice timing to Samerson from Austin. We say that the Vixens are still leading by six, but it just felt, feels like Fever are gaining momentum again. Absolutely. I think it's just them taking them away from their game plan, but that's, that's, the, that's what makes a great team, that you can win ugly, and grind it out, and still be up on the scoreboard. Fowler, two on one, does not bother her at all. As she gets the fever back within five. Watson has to go back to Weston. Austin, back to Weston. Really caught, they have to go across, they find Maloney. And Bruce gets a deflection, picked up by Francis Bayman, and Simmons just fumbles. Straight up to Fowler. How did she find her there? Lucky play there. Glasgow. As you can see, her turn around and go, sorry about that. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky play by Fever. But smart as well. When you're stuck and you're Verity Simmons, why wouldn't you launch it up in the air? Fowler out of the circle. We don't see this often. Lewis trying to keep her out, keep an eye on that battle. As I said, she's working her behind, she's working her front, she's getting her out of the circle. That's one thing Olivia Lewis is definitely trying. She's trying different things. And that's the advantage of being in a team and getting to play on these players at training all the time. Olivia Lewis used to play for West Coast Fever, come across to Vixens this year. And she will have a lot of intel on playing Fowler. Rani Sanderson off, Kawenda back onto the goal shooter. It's obviously that one point play time, and I think sometimes this combination of Austin and Kawenda work a little bit nicer. Inject Rani when you really need her in the two point. Great win from Kate Eddy, Alice Teague Neal. Penalised Watson. Kumwenda straight into attack. The steady hands of Watson finds Kumwenda. And the Vixens are extending their lead. Up by five. Now that this deficit is starting to draw out, Courtney Bruce is starting to, to get out of the circle a little bit, looking for the fly. There's risk in, you have to fly to obviously create opportunity, but there's also risk in leaving someone behind the, behind the post, right underneath it. Lewis flies for that one! What great timing from the youngster. Watson, will the Vixens attack reward the hard work from Olivia Lewis in defence? Not to be, Simmons comes up with it. What an incredible win. Let's take a look at the Harvey Norman highlights here. Simmons launches it up, but Lewis was waiting. Kosh coming on to goal attack now, giving Glasgow that little breather. We don't usually see her in the circle. We only saw it a little bit. More out on the wing. Quick double play with Teague Neal. Kosh takes her shot and says, you know what, Dan Ryan? You can put me on in the power five too. <laughs> Watson right, getting that nice physical right, pressure from Francis Bayman. Instruction centre. Yes. Yes, there. Love seeing the coaches. Some sit there and contact. just let the players do their thing. And Dan, I Punch think if he could, player. he'd put a bib on and get out there <laughs> yeah, for him. He sure would. The hype man. <laughs> Steady. 
one from Austin. Fever, what can they do with it? Francis Bayman has to go back, but goes again. Wayward pass from Courtney Bruce. Fever are looking at each other like, who was that for? What's going on? There's a yeah. big confusion out there on court. A little bit of, oh, was that your, my pass or your, your catch? But I think the drive should have been up the centre. They started to get really wide, that draw up the centre. And obviously that connection between Bruce and Simmons is really strong as that link. But they're looking a little puzzled and confused as to, we're trying all these different things, but I'm not sure we have the answers just right now. Courtney Bruce letting the umpire know she did not touch that one. And she's in possession. Baseline throw in. Just gets it to Anstis. The physicality between Watson and Anstis. They're fighting over every ball. Simmons tries to go again. She's out of court. Weston backed up by Eddie. Weston sitting really high in that transition from Fever coming out. Trying to head, trying to second guess that pass. It obviously went over, created a little bit of confusion. And they got the pick up in the end. Shani Norder, if you were coaching Fever, what would you do right now? just need to really settle down. They're a real firecracker team. That we know they love to go 100 miles an hour, but right now it's about doing those little things well. Before, Courtney Bruce just stayed in front, and that's what forced the ball over the baseline. She didn't have to do anything special. So we look at Dan Ryan here tell, talking to his team, but come in short, change direction, eye contact, where is the space? Really go back to basics. When you get that down pat, then you can bring the pace up again. Vixens leading by seven. We've just got over five and a half minutes to play in this third quarter. The power five nearly in. And we know both teams can do damage in the last five minutes. We spoke about Jess Anstis playing that tagging role against Watson and she hasn't had any intercepts or any, any real um, influence on the game. Watson sitting at 21 goal assists from 31 feeds. They really need to shut down there, I think, if they're going to restrict the Vixens putting on more score. And it's a HCF tactical timeout. No surprises. West Coast Fever have called this one right before the power five. Let's take a listen into the West Coast Fever huddle and what Dan Ryan's got to say. So get off the ball and be assertive to that person that has it, all right? We're not going to step back and wait for someone else. We're the aggressors, so get the ball in your hands, all right? Let's link a little bit higher between you two. So come up and take it on. Watch your timing come off their bodies and punch, all right? But if we want to get back into the game, we've got to be aggressive. We've got to be confident. You've got to have conviction, all right? If we do that, absolutely in control, all right? So stand up and let's make that shift. Come on, let's go. Fascinating listening in. Shani Norda, you were pretty much in the Vixen's huddle. What did you hear? Well, there was a little bit of a change up. Joe Weston had some blood on her wrist. She was getting it wrapped up. Couldn't get it wrapped up in time. Emily Maddox is now on in goal defense. She's got another opportunity to step up in this game. Let's see what she can bring. Simmons, center pass. What can she do with it? Teague Neal, back to Francis Bayman. Across to Simmons again. Vixens defending, sitting in the middle channel, forcing them out wide. They go wide. Simmons straight up to Fowler. Doesn't want to take it. Back out to Anstis. Dan Ryan asked his attackers to be aggressive. He said, stop waiting for someone else to do it and just go and provide multiple options. That can, that's absolutely what they need to do, but are they going to try and do too much? So. You've got to find that balance in providing options, but they're not getting caught in that rat race. Austin in the power five. Suncorp super shot, not to be this time. Watson, though, gets the rebound. Kumwenda. Oh, she sneaks that one in. The first Suncorp super shot for Maui Kumwenda. Kosh. Vixen's into defence straight away. Kumwenda looks hurt. I think she got a hand to the face. Courtney Bruce is looking after her in the background. Kosh into attack. 
fatigue, Neil. Double play. Thought we might have seen the injection back of Sasha Glasgow come on, especially during this power five. If they're going to bring it back, they need to have that score power out there. Look at this Harvey Norman replay. Quinn is just flying down the background. She looks okay, though. She's ready as the Vixens go back to go forward. Patient play. You don't feel like the Vixens are in a rush. Why would they be? They now extend their lead to nine goals. Vixens are playing that the game that Fever needs to, and Courtney Bruce said, you know, fake that ball out, get Lewis coming, flying out, and then hit Jay under the post. Maddox gets her hand to it, taps it into Lewis, who repays her all that effort. Brilliant play by the Vixens. Smart attacking of the ball. Fever getting impatient, starting to throw those long passes. You're going to have to work a little bit harder, create those opportunities short and sharp. How do you do that as a Fever attack line? Is it about throwing in a few fakes when you're about to put it in, trying to get the defenders looking another way? It's about playing at different paces, playing at the one second, the two second, the three second, making them accountable for you, but doing the work off the ball rather than creating contests. As we see it fly down the court there, miscommunication by Kosh, but you really do need to try and keep them guessing. If you're just playing at the one pace the entire time, it allows the defenders time to see it, sight it, and intercept it. Mannix to Watson, Watson to Austin. Kwenda out of the circle. There's no one in the circle for the Vixens, but Austin finds her way. She wants to be in Suncorp range if she can. Back to Maloney. It feels like the Vixens have all the time in the world in attack. They were all crowded on that one area. Fever put them exactly where they wanted to, but that swing ball just opens it right out. <sighs> just as both teams will take this opportunity to have a bit of a breather. We're just under two minutes to play in this third quarter. And if we look at our Nissan net points, match leaders, Fowler's right there at the top, as she is every single game. Liz Watson and Teague Neal doing a great job. Ball in her hand right now. You can see the three out of those five missing net points or highest missing net points for the Fever. But they're trailing. Yet the people for the, the Vixens are the midcourt for Maloney and Watson doing a lot of that power work out at the front. Glasgow in the game. Suncorp super shot not to be. Lewis all the pressure over the shot. But she gets it this time. Rewarding Dan Ryan for putting her back out there. And she's fired up. Bruce tried to get her hands on that. And it is her ball in the end. A wayward pass to Watson on the top of the circle didn't work. But Watson gets it back again. When your attackers are getting intercepts, you know your team is on top. It's that one-on-one -on -one pressure. Vixens are known for it, just building. Missed two-way shot. Great hands by Bruce. Francis Bayman couldn't get it. Kumwenda has another go. And it's those little scrappy things, you know, Bruce trying to keep it in. You're tapping Francis Bayman's hands into Simmons. Sometimes when you're trailing and you're trying to do too much, it goes against you. It's a contact call against Francis Bayman. Austin, calm, steady, makes that count. Sunday, Ariang has been sitting there for a while. She's been able to see it from the sideline. Will we see her come in? Bateman getting a little bit uh, clumsy. A few too many. Five seconds to play. Glasgow. We'll get another one. I'm extended. You're out as well. Yes, both out. And cool and calm from Glasgow. She makes that one count. It's nine goals at the difference here. Have a listen to the crowd here. Home court advantage. How much does that play into this last quarter for the Vixens? Oh, they're up and about. They're just that extra person when you need that spark. If the fever starts to come back, we can even see Verity Simmons obviously going to wing attack, answers into the centre. A few changes here. Bayman onto the wing. 
Even Ariane has got offense. He's throwing everything out there, but you have to. You've got to try and get this ball back. Bring the game back into your, your hands. Austin gets us away for this last quarter. The Vixens extend their lead to nine. The only change, Western back on the court. If we have a look, huge changes as Maddie was mentioning for the West Coast Fever. Alice Teagneald back in goal attack. Fowler steps in. The sharpest shooter out there on court today. 42 from 44. Watson looks over the hands. What can she see? Austin out of the circle. Pinpoint accuracy with that pass straight to Kumwenda. And that's what happens when the Fever draw them wide. They have that nice movement and dynamic coming up through the center with the shooter. Ansis slides on the court. Maloney gets done for contact. Fever, get another shot. Reliable, under the post, always, Janelle Fowler. And even putting Alice Tegneal back there is that, obviously, third feeder. Janelle feels obviously very comfortable having her out the front. So maybe just bringing a little bit more continuity. Settle in, feel comfortable, see the ball, give it. Ariane doing a huge amount of work, not just on her player. She's in, she's out, she's back, she's hesitating, hedging. They're really trying to keep the Vixens attack guessing. Contact keeper. Take a step in, goal, goal shooter. Take a step back, keeper in, meet in the middle. They really set, are setting up that split circle fever. But it's this, these out of plays. It's not building any pressure against the Vixens. I know you want to have a crack and try and win back ball, but you've got to try and do it whilst you're still in play and put the Vixens under pressure. Teague Neild, straight up she goes. It's a two on one. Weston gets a hand to it. A little late, says the umpire, as Teague Neal gets to take the penalty. Vixen's doing that a little bit more of a two on one on um, Fowler now. I think because Alice Teague Neal doesn't usually have as many creative shooting shots as Glasgow. So see that double back in defence to try and isolate her out of the circle. We see the Fever defenders, Courtney Bruce, Bayman, Francis Bayman, they're Bayman. very heavy penalised. Does that really, like, does that become a costly thing for your team? Oh, as Ariang and Bruce nearly block that shot. Well, I think against a team like the Vixens, they're very patient. So you've got to try and create that snowball effect. Have a fly, try and fly again. But you've got to grind them down, then do it. I think they're trying to do it a little bit early. They haven't done that prep work to then set themselves up for the fly and create those opportunities. Bruce from the back goes straight to Teague Neal. Where does she go? Two on one again. A stepping call. Stepping against Teague Neal. Weston resets for the Vixens. Goes long, finds Austin. Wants it back. A goal defence that loves attacking. And this is where Fever need to just build it. Make him work it around, force them apart. Shut down options. Kumwenda easily finds Austin. We spoke in the pregame about what Fever have had to do. They haven't had a game at home since round one. They've been on the road. They played on Sunday against the Firebirds and they're backing up again. Shani Norda, can you sense a bit of fatigue in the Fever camp? You really can start to see that fatigue sinking in. They were in Melbourne round two, Queensland round three, now back in Melbourne. And I know at the start we said, look, they're going to have to do that, whether it's Commonwealth Games and keep backing up. But the flights do have an impact and they just seem a little bit off the pace. We just saw Alice Tegna with a step, which is so unusual for her. And I'm starting to think is her COVID tiredness starting to creep into this game as well. So and they are just starting to look a little bit more off the pace. We've both had COVID, Charney, and Maddie, you've had it as well. I don't know how they can get up and play a week after having it. Especially with no training prep. I mean, you know how much time, I mean, they're fit, they've done their pre-season, absolutely, but nice shot there by Alice Tegnell. But you've, it has to pay a toll. And, you know, you're not home. You're, you're, yeah. you're away, you're flying in, you're trying to stay fit. 
Let's see what Fever can do in the last 10 minutes of this fourth quarter. Vixens leading by 10. Austin breaks open the Fever defence. Kumwenda out of the circle. She's got to go back to Watson. Great hands by Anstis. Courtney Bruce picks it up. The Fever. Oh, just sneaked that one through. No, they didn't. Those costly errors. It's undisciplined by Bruce. She knew the state of the play. It's a, it's a clutch moment for them to try and come back. Just get that easy one in front. I think this is a little bit coming, that frustration coming into play. And you can see Courtney Bruce pleading with the umpire. Let them have a HCF tactical timeout. They need a reset. They need a regroup. But believe it or not, the Fever can easily come back into this game. Let's take a listen into what Dan Ryan has to say. All right, so get as central as we possibly can. Slice the circle, high ball into Jay. All right, we need goals, Clinton, we're gonna try and win this game. All right, so don't be reckless with it. Get yourself into a good position, but place it to where give her a chance. All right? Just line this right away, okay? 100%, all right? So we just need those quick ones. Hard on defense, hard on defense, hard on defense. All right? Everyone in the contest. contest. In the contest. Everyone in. All right. This next five-minute block, we need to score goals quickly and we need to give everything we've got to try and turn ball over. So have a fly at some stuff. Take some risks. Overcommit. Back person fill. Whatever we can to try and get some grit moments. We get him. We're in it. And we let it go. Right, let's go. Let's bring the ball right back to centre, OK? As soon as you get him, grab right back. I'm excited listening to Dan Ryan. He's pumped. He, he is pumped. He wants them to take a risk. Shani Norda, what do the Vixens want to do? They're, well, they're also pumped. They're just really <laughs> happy with what they're doing at the moment. They came along and said, it's their centre pass. We do not give them an inch. We are not letting them back into this game. And you can see them that they're going to be able to fight for every ball. And you know they will when Kira Austin, goal attack, is getting intercepts. And like you said about Liz Watson before. But then, oh, on the Ariane. reply. She gets so. in there. She takes a risk. And look what she can do. She can turn that ball over. But like you said before, Fever is one team that you can just never trust that you're up far enough because they can score so, so quickly. And there's still eight minutes 40 left in this game. Already you can see the Fever are playing with more intent. Rudy Ellis enters the game into goalkeeper. Courtney Bruce has been moved out to goal defence. Sunday Ariane on to win defence. They spoke about this in the fever huddle, though. You need to build the pressure. They said discipline, stay in the contest. So you want to be proactive. You want to dictate where you want the player to go, but you've also got to use your footwork. And maybe that is that tired, those tired bodies coming in, kind of lunging at the ball, not running onto it. Fowler pulls that one in. Glasgow, here she is, back in the game. You might think that, oh, they're just... Hell bearing it into the goal shooter, but Dan Ryan did say we need it if we want to get in this game, we need to score goals oh, quickly. Weston finds Kumwenda. That connection. What an incredible ball. She's smiling, she's happy. Yeah, that's double a, thumbs up. What it done, Joe. What it done. <laughs> Lewis gets up to that ball, rewards her team for all of the pressure they put on for her. Here the Vixens go. What can they do? Eddie, Weston to Watson, Maloney forcing her way through, straight up, Austin waiting in the wings. Just getting her eye in before that power five comes in. Livia Lewis, she has come on and played her role perfectly for the Vixens. She's shut down Fowler. She's gone a little bit quiet. She's now struggling to even get some of those high balls. The balls are coming shorter Contact in. The feeders aren't putting it up in the air. She's made them question their, their game plan. It's like she listened to Dan Ryan's address, takes some risks, she's like, all right, I will. <laughs> and it's actually paying off for her. Something about players coming up against their old teams. There's just something extra special in it. You find another level. Yeah, because you would have done that a few times, Madge. What is it like? Because obviously there's a lot of mental pressure coming into it too, but does it really fire you up? 
I think you just want to go out there, you know, everyone has their different reasons for moving clubs, whether it's opportunity or um, they want to go back home or you just want a bit of a change up if you need a new environment. You just want to come out and, and know that what you sacrifice to make that change to a different team can pay off and reward you. Kamwenda extends the Vixens lead by 15. Great hands by Weston. There's a tussle. She's out of play. Simmons to, to Fowler. Steps in. We'll get another go at it. McInnes asked her players to be aggressive onto the ball, even in defence. Not just attack, but be aggressive. Fly for it. Have a go. Right to the very end, she's asking them to continue to give more and more. Fever, the lowest score so far they have had this season. And I learnt today from listening to a podcast around the Fever and the Vixens and what needs to happen. And it is all about keeping the Fever, if you can, to under 65. And if you can do that, you generally will get a win. Bruce to Ariang. We're nearly in the power five. So much damage can be done in this last five minutes. We haven't seen Fever put up a super shot for quite a while though now. None in the third quarter. So it's going to be a big task to shoot that many to get them back in the game to win it. Shani Naughty, you love your stats. What have you got for me? Well, coming into this game, team, with goals scored against, Vixens were second with the least amount, but West Coast Fever, as another ball goes astray here, were fifth in the competition. So whilst apart from this game, they've been really high scoring, they actually let a lot of goals through. So that is going to be an area that they're going to have to address moving forward in this season. The Vixens have everything on their terms at the moment. They've got the momentum. They're controlling the speed. Fever starting to point. Oh, oh, Rudy Alice comes flying through. She says, no, they don't. Fowler hits Anstis at the top. Simmons, a bit more patient play from the Fever. Glasgow, can she get this one? Oh, Fowler. <laughs> you can tell things aren't going your way when those... She's frustrated. ...balls and just four unforced errors. Bruce goes flying. Ariane picks it up. Glasgow manages to keep it in. Look at the expression on the Fever players' faces. There's an intensity in this game, and they want to try and change what's going on. Both teams getting a little bit scrappy. Fowler, Glasgow. Suncorp, super shot for Glasgow. They need a few more of those. Let's see what they can do. Straight to Fowler. She's going to have a go. Oh, just fall short. The Vixens are in attack. You can see the Vixens quite happy to just keep the pace a little slower. They don't need to rush it. They don't need to force it. What do Fever need to do, Maddie? They... Oh, oh Rudy get, get it, Get Rudy Alice to get a few more tips. But it is streaming down the court quite easily. I think they're still in chase mode. Defensively, they're pointing fingers. You go to here, you go to there. Stick one on one. Like, let's just go back to doing your job against your opponent. And then hopefully those balls will come. I think it is a little bit too late, though. It's going to be hard to bring this deficit back. Bruce. Bounce pass to Ariane. Flies again. She wants it. She wants to be in control. That's what you want from your leader out there on court. Glasgow to Fowler. Can she? She can get the rebound, that's for sure. The centre pass for Vixens. Contact wing, go there. Maloney holding the fist up. Come on, let's like just tick the ball over, stay nice and calm, stay composed. Let's just work it in to a nice, clean, easy shot. They lead by 13 with two minutes to play in this final quarter. The Vixens also Contact lead this in. final quarter by six at the moment. Austin. Two brilliant games from Kira Austin, that girl on your screen, putting up the shot. She is back. 
and she is putting her hands up for com game selection. And it's good to have that confidence, not only obviously in her Rose ability to, to Glasgow. Can she reward her? Yes. What a pass. I mean, you have to do it. There's no better time. You've got to go for it now. But back to Kira Austin. Obviously, you need that confidence back into your body. And then once you know that you can actually do it, then you can start, start worrying about how you're going to pull up, how it's all feeling, and just focus on your job and just taking each play by play. She can probably focus a little bit more on the game and less <laughs> on her body. Austin, there she goes. Vixens just want to tick it over. Where we see the frenetic pace of Fever. Get it back to the centre pass. Let's try and put some score on the board with those two-point shots. And for every successful Suncorp super shot, don't forget $100 is being donated from Suncorp to the Confident Girls Foundation as Lewis goes flying. Glasgow, is this another $100? It sure is. And all of that money goes to the Confident Girls Foundation to continue their work in keeping girls in the game. Kunwenda, can she add to the tally? But Austin just... Calm in her rebound, can't get this one. 20 seconds. Bruce. Vixen still in defense. Great ball, Ariane to Simmon. Glasgow, Eddie gets her hand in there. Strong performance from her today. As Glasgow nails the last shot of the game. Been too good. A nine goal win for them.